Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Black Knights Weekly. On this week's show, Rich DeMarco will go one-on-one -on -one with Sprint Football Head Coach Lieutenant Colonel Mark West, and we have features on running back Raymond Maples and tennis sisters Della and Ellie Taylor. But before we get to that, let's take a look back at the week that was in Army Athletics. The volleyball team started the Patriot League portion of their schedule with a trip to the Lehigh Valley for matches against Lehigh and Lafayette. The Black Knights beat the Mountain Hawks three sets to one and swept the Leopards one day later. Sophomore Margot Jarka picked up Patriot League Player of the Week honors after collecting 21 kills and only three errors in the two matches. Also, Mary Vaccaro was named the league's Rookie of the Week for the fourth time this season. The freshman averaged almost 12 and a half assists per set in her first two league matches. The men's soccer team was the other Black Knight squad to begin league games, hosting Holy Cross at Clinton Field. Trent Brown scored the first goal of the match and assisted on another, helping the Black Knights to a 2-1 win. The junior was named League Offensive Player of the Week for his efforts. Freshman Devin Purley was honored as the league's Rookie of the Week after scoring Army's two goals in their win over Bryant. The football team suffered a setback on the road Saturday at Ball State. Raymond Maples rushed for career highs of 125 yards and two scores. Fullback Jared Hassan also broke the century mark, rushing for 111 yards. Defensively, Steve Erzinger led the Black Knights with 17 tackles. The women's soccer team finished up their non-league schedule by hosting Marist on Sunday. Sophomore Kim Ahn scored her sixth goal of the year in Army's 1-0 win. Goalie Monica Lee had four saves and recorded her eighth shutout of the season. The senior would be named Patriot League Goalie of the Week and ECAC Defensive Player of the Week. West Point was the site of this past weekend's Eastern Championships. The women's tennis team hosted the event for the 13th consecutive season. Freshman Natalie Allen made it to the semifinals of the main draw in singles, while sisters Della and Ellie Taylor reached the semis of the main draw in doubles. The men's tennis team split between the USTA Billie Jean Collegiate Invitational in Flushing Meadows, New York, and the SJU Invitational in Philadelphia. At the USTA event, sophomore Asuka Iso defeated one of the top singles players from Penn. Even though the Black Knights battled rain in Philadelphia, all members of the team saw action. On Sunday afternoon, the golf team took on Georgia in Princeton. Matt Philly led Army with a 2-over-74 on a course that was named one of Golf Week's best classic courses. After this short break, Rich DeMarco will go one-on-one -on -one with Sprint Football Head Coach Lieutenant Colonel Mark West. That's next. This is Scott Swanton, Director of Strength Conditioning, with our SurgeX Training Tip of the Week. These are just some tips to help you restart your exercise habits. One, don't break the habit in the first place. The easiest way to keep things going is to simply not stop. Two, reward yourself for showing up. I think that 90% of making a habit is just making the effort to get there. Three, commit yourself for 30 days. Make a commitment to go every day for a month. Four, make it fun. If you don't enjoy yourself at the gym, it's going to be hard to keep it a habit. And five, schedule during what we call quiet hours. Don't put exercise time in place where it could be easily interrupted. Set that time aside for yourself. Welcome back to Black Knights Weekly. Rich DeMarco joined by the head coach of the Army Sprint Football Team, Lieutenant Colonel Mark West, a 1991 West Point graduate, former Sprint Football player here at the Academy. And Colonel West, thanks for a few minutes here on Black Knights Weekly. Uh, thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. Going into your third year as head coach, though you missed last year, you were deployed in the Middle East. How has it been coming back and, and getting this program back as the head coach? Uh, first of all, it's been fun. Uh, I missed it while I was away. Um, you know, glad I had an opportunity to to get back out and and serve. You know, with the with the Army regreen, so to speak. Uh, but I certainly miss the guys. I miss the program. You know, miss the team, uh, and it's great to be back. Coach, with your history as a former Army sprint football player, what type of perspective do you bring to sprint football that is not a hundred percent like what many would generalize to be football? Uh, well, I think uh, first and foremost, as a former player. You know, I know what these guys are going through day in and day out, the daily grind of cadet life uh, and all that's associated with that. Uh, and, of course, the, the major difference between what we do with sprint football and what, you know, normal Division One programs do is, is the weight. Um, you know, with a 172-pound weight limit, uh, it's a constant grind every day to keep, you know, keep your weight down, uh, to make weight uh, in order to play the game. So um, I think for me, uh, being a former player, having to go through that, 
uh, is is the uh, you know unique perspective that I can uh, bring to the program. Coach, obviously you come from a family with a lot of West Point ties. Your wife, former soccer player here at West Point. What is uh, being a former cadet athlete here at the academy, being here as a coach, what has West Point really meant to you? Well, and it's funny you ask that question because this weekend happens to be our 20th, uh, uh, 20th reunion uh, for our class. But, uh, you know, West Point is, is such a wonderful institution, and to, to be back here as both a faculty member um, and uh, you know, and, and a head coach for the sprint football team is just a dream come true for me. Uh, to give back to uh, my alma mater uh, that uh, has provided so much to me in terms of you know where I am now uh, as a man, uh, where I am as a professional, uh, in, in you know in my occupation, uh, and you know what it means, uh, like you said, not just to me but to my family. Uh, is really just a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So uh, I wake up every morning and pitch myself, uh, you know, knowing that I had the fact to, to do what I do uh, each and every day. And you mentioned the ties to West Point, this being the, the 20th reunion um, of your graduation class. In your time in the Army since graduation, how did you then get involved with the sprint football team after being a player as a cadet to the point at which you became the head coach of this program? Well, I was stationed here uh, once before from uh, 2001 to 2004, um, you know, Gene McIntyre was the head coach at the time, and, and I helped out with the team uh, as an office representative, uh, then as a coach, uh, and just wanted to, to get back into football. Um, and then when uh, I went away for my next duty assignment, uh, I got the phone call uh, one day from uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, who was the uh, athletic director at the time, asking me if I was interested in coming back to coach. And, uh, you know, I, I said, certainly. Uh, I knew uh, the big army would have something to say about it uh, since uh, you know I was active duty uh, armor officer uh, but uh, but we were able to, to work out um, you know uh, work out with me being able to teach and coach at the same time uh, which is something that, that Navy does um, they have a similar type of, of setup where they bring an active duty officer back to uh, the Naval Academy uh, to coach their team so we thought we'd try to follow that model uh, and, you know, I was able to come back and, and assume duties as both an instructor uh, and a head coach, and, and it has, has worked out well. Really full circle for you. It must be so fulfilling to be back here at West Point. You graduated from here and be the head coach. Well, it is. Uh, my children, uh, you know, go to school at West Point uh, Middle School, a great school, uh, and O'Neill High School now. My, my son is uh, playing quarterback out there, and that was the same high school my wife went to uh, when she lived here at West Point. So uh, it's certainly full circle. Uh, you know, my wife's working for the dean right now, and we're just glad to be, you know, a part of, of this wonderful, wonderful institution, uh, you know, West Point uh, is. So uh, we're glad to be back. Well, Mark, we appreciate a couple of minutes and best of luck the rest of this year. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. That's Army Head Sprint Football Coach Lieutenant Colonel Mark West, Rich DeMarco on Black Knights Weekly. And we'll have more coming up in just a moment. Army fans, there's no better place to be before a West Point football game than Black Knights Alley. Open three hours before kickoff, come out and avoid the traffic crunch. Black Knight's Alley features fun for the whole family. From the Black Knight walk, to face painting and autographs with Army athletics teams and mascots, to live music, food and beverages, inflatable games, interactive displays, and the live broadcast of the Army football tailgate show. There literally is something for everyone. So make a day of it. That's Black Knight's Alley, three hours before every Army home game along Mills Road. Army football, more than just a game. The Army women's tennis team has recently started their season, and two of its star players have known each other for a long time. Here's more. The Army women's tennis team has an added family feel to it this season. After a year apart, sisters Della and Ellie Taylor are reunited as doubles partners. Della is a sophomore, and before coming to West Point last year, Ellie says this reunion might not have happened. She said, Ellie, whatever you're doing, you're not coming to Army. You're not coming to the same school as me. And then the first letter we got home, it ended with, uh, now I give permission for Ellie to come here. So I guess from that point on, I actually considered Army. <laughs> And when it came time for Ellie's college decision, both sisters say their relationship influenced the younger Taylor. It was actually between Navy and Army, actually. And I'm like, come on, I'm here. Like, just pick Army. This is an easy choice. It was difficult, but she finally chose Army. Even though I 
really don't want to say this, but probably the reason I chose ARMY was because of my sister. <laughs> Just that one extra thing, and support and family is so big here, and I'm, I live in California, and to have, like, family here is, it's really important. The two played doubles for one season in high school and haven't missed a beat being paired again this year. The sisters won the doubles A flight at the Stony Brook invite two weeks ago. Head coach Paul Peck says he and the team enjoy watching the Taylors play side by side. They had like this natural communication. It's almost like nonverbal communication thing going on. They, they can read each other's thoughts, which is great for doubles because doubles requires a lot of communication and it's sort of like the Bryan brothers. I mean, they they played a lot of doubles together before, so they can anticipate each other's moves. So it's neat to watch them play doubles. I mean, it's definitely unique because. You know, they have a lot of personality and they're, you know, they get really motivated out there. Ellie and Della say there were some minor disagreements when they first played doubles, but Della says there was none of that today. I think as, like, we both matured, like, we realized, like, fighting on the court is not going to get anywhere. And we are a team, like, we need to act like one. And at the end of the day, we, like, love each other, so we need to figure it out on the court, and we are. Ellie says their bond as sisters gives them a distinct advantage over their opponents. Other teams you see out there, they sometimes just say like, nice try, good try, but we can be fully honest with each other. We can say, step it up, or your backhand is really bad right now, like, step it up. But So that's really good that we can be really truthful and we don't care what either one says because we, by the end of the day, we still love each other no matter if we win or lose. The Taylor sisters say they love being doubles partners and look forward to the rest of the season. We'll be right back after this short timeout. Army football tickets are on sale now. Don't miss a minute of the day-long excitement at West Point's historic Mikey Stadium. Come out on Saturday, October 29th. The Black Knights take on Fordham. Kickoff is at 3.30. It's Military Appreciation Day. All military members can purchase tickets for just $10. And the first 5,000 fans will receive a limited edition print of Army's 1996 Independence Bowl team. Call the Army ticket office at 877-TIX-ARMY or go online at GoArmySports.com. Army football. It's more than just a game at West Point. One of the bright spots this season for the Army football team has been running back Raymond Maples. Rich DeMarco has more. Army running back Raymond Maples has emerged into a go-to player for the Black Knights. The sophomore from Philadelphia has improved his rushing numbers each game in 2011, culminating in his first career 100-yard game, picking up 125 yards on the ground and scoring twice at Ball State. As for that improvement from Game 1 to Game 4, off a 2010 season where he was the most utilized freshman in the backfield, Maple says it's mostly been just getting game reps. Honestly, even though I played a lot last year, I mean, I didn't actually play a lot. Um, my game experience, uh, first game, um, they had too many carries, and they bulked up my carries as the season went on, and I started getting more yards, I started producing more. Um, I mean, honestly, it coming with experience. After a freshman year, which saw him gain better than 200 yards on the ground and score one touchdown rushing and another receiving, Maples wasted no time after the new year to start work on the 2011 season. I took in a weight room, um, got a little bit bigger, got a little bit stronger, faster, all the things, and everybody wants to, you know, propel themselves in during the offseason, and actually that helped me out a lot. Army head coach Rich Ellerson says Maple's improvement from last year and through four games this year has definitely stood out. He's playing with a lot more confidence and he's and he's learning how to finish runs. You know, we we've always loved the way he got started. Now I'm like I'm liking to see how he finishes some of these runs. He's a very physical runner, as well as a very gifted one and uh, with tremendous ball skills. You know, he should you know um, that that's one of the bright spots. And Maples has accumulated his numbers in a backfield which routinely has seven different ball carriers per game. Maples says Army's backfield rotation has kept him sharp. It constantly puts pressure on you. You know, they always had that, they emphasized the next guy, if you don't do the job, the next guy after you will. So, you know, with that level and, that, I mean, that, <laughs> that encouragement, I mean, you had no choice but to, like, step your game up because everybody wants to play. And although Maples has put up significant numbers for the Army offense, which currently ranks third in the nation in rushing yards per game, the running back says success for the unit comes down to making plays. 
I think we just gotta execute. Um, you know, during the games that we lost, I feel as though we killed ourselves. We had too many penalties, too many fumbles, um, just too many, too many mishaps. So I feel as though if, if we correct ourselves in that area of the game, I think we should be straight. And Maples is looking for that improvement for him and the offense to continue throughout this year. For Black Knights Weekly, I'm Rich DeMarco. We'll have more Black Knights Weekly after this. Join the Army A-Club today and support cadet athletes 12 months a year. Members of the A-Club receive priority consideration for parking, seat locations, pregame hospitality, as well as Army-Navy tickets. But the benefits don't stop there. The A-Club also gives members access to special receptions and events throughout the year. To join, visit the A-Club link at GoArmySports.com or call 845-938-2322. The Army A-Club, supporting cadet athletes. Well, only one more thing to get to, and that's the weekend preview. The men's and women's cross-country teams return to action this weekend at the Paul Short Run. Head coach Troy Engel says this historic event will be even more special this year. It's the first time this season that we'll see the overwhelming majority of the conference teams. Uh, I think all but just one or two will be attending and competing along with some of the best, certainly all the best teams in the region and most of the teams on the eastern seaboard that are good will be there. It's a great meet, lots of teams, um, and on the same course that will run the conference championship for us. The volleyball team plays their first home Patriot League matches of the season as they welcome American and Navy to West Point. Head coach Alma Cavacci says the team's 2-0 start in the league is fantastic. It is a great feeling. It is a great feeling, and it's a credit to the team. Though uh, the girls have worked extremely hard, the coaching staff has done a very good job uh, teaching, coaching, but again, with the credits and the schedule that they have here, uh, to be able to come to practice energized, focused, pumped up, it is a great feeling this year, and I couldn't, I can't say, uh, I mean, I can say so much about how great our team is. Shea Stadium will be the site of the Sprint football team's home opener this Friday night. The Black Knights take on Mansfield at 7 p.m. Head coach Lieutenant Colonel Mark West says his team is hungry for their first win. We had a bye week last week uh, and uh, you know, went back to the drawing board with a lot of our uh, technique, uh, fundamentals, uh, you know, what we are trying to do uh, on both sides of the football. So uh, we had a great bye week uh, and this week we've been really focused on getting our first win against Mansfield. It's homecoming weekend at Mikey Stadium as the football team gets ready to square off with Tulane. Kickoff is at noon. Here's head coach Rich Ellerson. Tulane's a, a, a familiar opponent, someone we, we've, we've seen every year uh, since I've been here. Our veteran players are, are familiar with their veteran players. Our, our, certainly Coach Toledo and I go back uh, for years uh, uh, before, much be, before West Point and uh, Tulane. So, again, someone we... Uh, Folks we have great respect for, um, they've had some great days this year. They've had some tough days like we have this year. Two Army-Navy matchups also highlight the weekend. The men's soccer team travels down to Annapolis for a 7.30 p.m. showdown with the mids. Head coach Russell Payne has had a clear message for his players this week. Just continue to do the things in preparation that give us confidence and make us successful as a team. That, that's really it. Um, you know, and the other part of this week is, hey, just focus on your schoolwork. And, and, uh, and getting your rest and, and getting your body recovered and, and uh, you know, don't spend too much time on anything else. And, and that's it, you know, if you, if, you, if you change your routine going into a game like this, then, you know, sometimes that's, that's the, the opposite effect of what you want. The golf team will also be in Annapolis taking on their academy rivals. Head coach Brian Watts has put his golfers through many different scenarios during practice this week. We're just trying to be creative and, and uh, you know, try and put the guys at ease as much as possible. But there's always that, that formula of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, and uh, I think the, the pressure within um, to go down there and perform is, is always something that uh, one of the hurdles that you have to get over. And for us, it, it's about just going down and playing golf and playing the golf course. Rounding out the weekend, the women's soccer team opens Patriot League play when they take on Holy Cross at Clinton Field on Sunday. Head coach Stephanie Golan says her team is ready to start their league slate. After dropping the game to, to Delaware, you know, the, the girls were, were disappointed, uh, mostly disappointed with, with the way that, that we came out. And, 
the understanding that it's, we'd been talking about it. We'd been talking about the fact that we can't do that, and it wasn't until something bad actually happened, a loss, that it sunk in that, yeah, that is a possibility. So, you know, to be able to rebound and get two shutouts, um, and in both games we created a lot of, a lot of opportunities, um, I think we've got a lot of confidence going into the, into the Patriot League, which is good. That will do it for another edition of Black Knights Weekly. We hope you enjoyed watching today's show, and we'll see you next week. So long, everybody.